I've been using this M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch for just over a year now, and I want to tell you about it. First off, I just want to say thank you to everyone that subscribed to this channel. I was quite blown away by the amount of people that have watched a couple of my videos already and how many people have subscribed. So first of all, thank you. So I've been using this M1 Max MacBook Pro for just over a year now. My company purchased it for me so I could do my work. I'm a creative video editor at a brand and this MacBook Pro has been working flawlessly every single day for the past year. I opted to choose the 16 inch. Personally, I feel like the 14 inch would have been much better for my workflow. My setup at home, as well as at work, I have a monitor, 4K monitor here and at work. So I'm always plugging into a bigger screen. So the actual 16 inch real estate, as lovely it is, as it is if I don't have a screen to use it to edit, it's great, but it is heavy. That's why the 14 inch would have been a bit better for me. Reasons I say that, obviously bigger screen real estate, nicer to edit and watch things from. And also it's got a slightly bigger battery. I'll do some Premiere work. I'll do some Photoshop work. I'll have YouTube going off on the side. I've got my emails, I've got my task manager and I don't have to charge the battery until maybe six hours later. And some of this work is quite hard working on the processors. I don't need to charge it. It's great. If you was just doing emails, just surfing the web, this will get you a full days of battery guaranteed. So when I had the option to choose what Mac I wanted, I chose the M1 Max. It's got 64 gig of memory and a terabyte SSD inside. Like I said, I've been using Premiere, I've been editing 4K video, Photoshop work, After Effects work, and I'll have three, maybe four of these apps running at one time. I haven't heard a fan since, and it's been over a year now. The Mac sometimes gets a little bit warm, on a warm day, it runs buttery smooth. I'm pretty sure it, as long as I look after it, it will do for many years to come. If you were just doing light edit work, light photo work, and general day to day, uh, but the M1 or the M1 Pro would be perfect for you. As for memory, I've got the 64 gig. I have a few Adobe Suite apps running and I haven't had it falter on me just yet. Music's playing, sometimes I've got some live streams going. There's no glitches, no worries. So 64 gig is plenty enough processing power for my needs. And I touched on it earlier, battery life has been phenomenal. At home, I have it clamshelled, so it's always on charge. When I go to the office, I have it up on a stand. I can get minimum five, six hours worth of battery life while video editing and photo editing, listening to music. In terms of build quality, I mean, it's Apple, it's phenomenal, it's beautiful. Touch of it feels great. Been traveling to and from, it's been in and out of bags. There's not one mark on it. So my setup at home, I use a mechanical Keychron keyboard and it's clamshell, so I don't actually use the keyboard here. But when I'm out and about, perfectly well. Much nicer than uh, the butterfly keys that you had on the old MacBooks. Biggest reason why you should get these types of Macs is because of the ports. HDMI port is a godsend. I use it everywhere. So I use it here on my setup and I use it at the office to plug into the monitor there. Love it. The SD card slot, amazing again. Thank you for putting that back in Apple. It is glorious. And then on this model, I've got three C ports or USB-C ports or Thunderbolt ports. I always get confused between both of them. I use Lacy or Lacy, I think it's pronounced Lacy hard drives for work. And write speeds have been great. I haven't had to sit there for hours and then wait for things to copy. Going from drive to drive is fairly fast as well. So if you're coming from one hard drive to another, that's been really good. And of course, the charger is now MagSafe. I love MagSafe. It was great. I'm so glad, glad it's back. And the fact the lights on there as well. That was such a game changer back in the day, seeing when it was charged or not, just by knowing by the light on top. So when it glows green, it's fully charged. Perfect. The screen has been a joy to use. It's called a Liquid Retina XDR display. Colors have been beautiful uh, to edit video with. Watching YouTube and Netflix in 4K looks superb. Can't fault it. The only problem is trying to find a external monitor that best suits it. Obviously, I know there's the studio display and the XDR display. They're a little bit out of my price range. No complaints about the display. Gorgeous, gorgeous screen. This is the webcam quality. I don't think it's too bad, to be honest. I mean, I'm in a fairly well-lit room next to a window for around the office. And when I'm at a coffee shop, this works pretty well.
So in terms of price, this one was just over three and a half thousand pounds, which is an extortion amount of money for a machine. Would I be happy to spend that amount of money? I think for long-term case, the fact that I've been using it for over a year and it still feels as fresh as it was on day one, I know that if I was purchasing this machine myself, I know that I'd be future-proofing myself. For my workflow, there's no point in me changing it. No point in me upgrading to an M2. This is perfectly fine and fast enough. I have no FOMO in missing out on M2 specs. If you really want to get a new Mac and an M2 to your price range, see if you can get a refurbed or a secondhand M1 Pro or Max. They will be perfectly fine for your needs. I would have no worries in recommending someone uh, an M1 Pro and M1 Max, even though an M2 is out. If you want to get an M2, go get yourself an M2, but if you want to save yourself a little bit of money, try and buy a refurbed or a secondhand M1 Pro or Max chip. I'd say the only cons, obviously there's price, but we've just discussed about how that will, the future proofness of it. Maybe the webcam is not great for some people, but let's be honest, for most people, it's going to be perfectly fine. If you can afford one, if not, there's plenty of other options out there. The MacBook Air, for instance, I'm really interested in the MacBook Air. If I wasn't doing so much video editing and I would be doing other bits, even though you can video edit on them, I think a MacBook Air is a great starter Mac to go for. Even actually, I was looking at the new Mac uh, M2 Mac Minis. Because I've got a 4K display, to have a Mac Mini really super powerful and so small, I think that'd be great if I wasn't going in back and forth from the office. I think that'd be a perfect home computer. Shoot me questions if you have anything uh, that you want to know more about. This was my sort of like less techie review. Let me know if you prefer these sorts of things where it's a little bit more real life rather than spec heavy. I know there's a lot of great spec heavy YouTube videos out there on these machines. If you want to see more of my desk, I might be doing a video on my desk setup for the year, how I want to upgrade it and what I want to get next. So subscribe if you haven't to see that video when it goes live and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.